ECN 3111, The Chicago School Introduction First, optimizing behavior of individual and firm. Second, observed prices and wages in general. Third, relies heavily on mathematical approach. Fourth, reject Keynesianism. Fifth, limited government intervention similar to classical. Getting to scholars of Chicago, Milton Friedman, who explained on modern quantity theory of money. Secondly, Gary Becker from Pennsylvania, referred as an intellectual imperialist. Robert Lucas Jr., who contributed to the rational expectation theory. Whom did the Chicago School benefit? To the population, for free government intervention, maximum economic freedom to maximize profit, and economic well-being in terms of wealth. What are the lasting contributions of the Chicago School? Let's move on. The tenets of the Chicago School became lasting contributions in the monetary theory. First, the demand for money. Second, the modern quantity theory of money. Third, the cause of Great Depression. Fourth, the long-run vertical Phillips curve. The demand for money as the demand for cash balances. There are three major determinants of the amount of money which are total wealth, cost of holding money, preferences. Modern quantity theory of money, the demand for money is relatively stable for the short run. An increase in the supply of money will leave people holding cash balances in excess of amounts they want. The cause of Great Depression, Friedman and Squad reached the controversial conclusion that monetary policy was responsible for causing the Great Depression. Phillips Curve The theory claims that with economic growth comes inflation, which in turn should lead to more jobs and less unemployment. Robert Lucas was born in Yakima, Washington, and earned his bachelor and PhD degrees at the University of Chicago. He was influenced by Friedman, who taught in the graduate program. Lucas developed his career at Carnegie Mellon and then returned to Chicago. In 1995, he was then awarded Nobel Prize in Economics. Friedman's theory of the inflation-unemployment relationship is based on the assumption of adaptive expectations. People predict future inflation based on past and present inflation and change only as new events unfold. Lucas goes beyond by saying that economic agents form rational expectations about future outcomes of current policy. Lucas said that people reflect on their past errors, process all information, and succeed in eliminating regulation in errors in predicting future price level. Because people understand that expansionary fiscal policies produce inflation, they immediately adjust their inflation expectations upward when government undertake these policies. Expectations of inflation render expansionary fiscal and monetary policies ineffective. Instead of the temporary increases in profits, output and employment implied by the move from A to B as in the figure, the economy moves directly from A to C. 
the expansionary fiscal and monetary policies directly and immediately boost the rate of inflation from P1 to P2 upward along the vertical long run Phillips curve. Lucas analysis distinguish between short run and long run aggregate supply. Y axis measures price level and the X axis measures real output. For new classical model, unanticipated change in aggregate demand does affect the level of real output, but only temporarily. Whereas anticipated change has no effect on output and their employment. Suppose economy starts at point A and unexpected surge in investment spending increases aggregate demand. Producers experience rising prices and expect higher profits. They increase employment and output, moving economy from A to B. Short run aggregate supply curve is upward sloping. Price level and real output increases. Now we are going to introduce the last scholar in Chicago school, Gary S. Becker. He was one of the great economists in Chicago school. He was born in 1930 at Chicago. He wrote for Business Week and composed five best-known books which are the First, Economics of Discrimination in 1957 Second, Human Capital in 1964 Third, Economic Theory. Fourth, A Treatise on the Family. Fifth, The Economic Approach to Economic Behavior. It believes that neoclassical theory can be used to explain all human behavior. Its approach to human behavior is based on market equilibrium, rational choice, and stable preference. One of Gary's theory is the discrimination. In this theory, it talks about discriminators have a preference for discrimination. However, this preference will be subjected to the market force, which causes the market will impose costs upon discriminators to reduce discrimination. The next theory is the investment in human capital. In 1964, Becker presented the theory of investment in human capital in its modern. Becker was the first to distinguish between general and specific training. He pointed out that the theory of human capital helps explain a wide range of empirical phenomena that have either been given or of interpretation or have baffled investigators. He said that human capital is going to be an important part of the thinking about development income distribution, labor turnover, and many other problems for a long time to come. The theory of the allocation of time is also one of the theory that introduced by Becker. The time used is a cost and will be optimized. Higher incomes will lead people to move to good intensive commodities and time-saving conveniences can increase time. He also claims that two worker families will have higher opportunity cost to have children, so they will have fewer. The last famous theory by Becker is the theory on the family. This theory is separated into four parts, which are the theory of marriage, fertility, altruism, and divorce. In the theory of marriage, it stated that reproducing and raising children are central commodities that marriage facilitates. The partner with the highest market wage is most likely to engage. In this theory, he also talked about fertility of a family. He claims that children are durable capital which add to the family's income or welfare. Marriage partners optimize on the number of children they have based on cost-benefit analysis, which they weigh the cost against the various benefits. Altruism in terms of linked utility. A person is altruistic when her or his utility increases because someone else's utility rises. Altruism adds to the potential gains from marriage because consumption of a commodity enables utility to rise by more than the rise in the utility to the consumer. Divorced 
People often get married even though they have incomplete information about their partner. When information reveals itself through the marriage, divorce may become a new optimal decision. Divorce are more likely early in the marriage than later because the accumulation of information occurs during the first few years of the marriage.